If you drive or cycle in BC, the beginning of this video is a must watch. These are bicycle crossings. You can tell because there's a bicycle next to a pedestrian on the sign. If you're driving along and you see someone waiting to cross on a bicycle, yield to them like you would if there was a pedestrian. It's important to know that the flashing lights are optional for people to use and only exist to provide extra visibility and remind motorists to yield. Now, I'm gonna stop you there. I know most of you don't want to watch a 10 minute long video about intersection design. So I'll be brief. If you're an advocate interested in how we can fix these crossings, that comes later on. But we're all responsible for making our streets safe. So like any good news article, I'm going to give you the important stuff right away. And after that, you can decide if the rest is interesting to you. Sound good? In short, I can boil it down to two problems. One, these crossings are the same, and yet people treat them totally differently depending on the context. This is a trail crossing, even though this street doesn't have a stop sign, and the bike path probably actually does, thanks CRD, it's pretty obvious that you need to yield to people cycling here. These crossings with green paint, maybe that's confusing people, they also have very few problems. It's a separated bike path that's crossing the street, and in that situation, drivers seem to get it. But all of a sudden, take the exact same crossing and make it come from a side street, and all of that goes out the window. You are on the side street, and the side street has a stop sign, so a lot of people simply refuse to stop for someone cycling. But they are not a motor vehicle waiting to turn onto the main street. They're on a bike, and this is their main route. They need and deserve the right of way. Problem two, these flashing lights really don't do much, and I could honestly make another video about these alone. Just remember that legally, these are not a traffic light. So whether you're driving or cycling, you need to treat these like a normal crossing and use your eyes. If you're cycling, I would say focus less on pushing the button and more on positioning yourself where cars can see you. I found this to be a good way to communicate how these crossings work through my actions, and a lot of the time, this is much faster than stopping to push the button. No matter what you do, people are going to drive by, so just get right out there and make sure they see you. In any interaction between two road users, it only takes one person making a smart choice to make that interaction safe. If both people make good choices, the interaction can be pleasant and frictionless. The misconception that flashing lights give people the right of way leads drivers into thinking they don't need to stop for people who don't activate the lights. And this also means that they're not paying attention. But this is a crossing, and your job at a crossing is to use your eyes. This is why flashing lights are dangerous. So we approach the car line. Make eye contact with the cars. Give them a thank you wave. Other side's already stopped. Easy peasy. If you wanted to know how to safely navigate these intersections, that's all you need to know. Make sure to share this video with at least two people you care about, and thanks for sticking around. But it's obvious that education alone isn't going to fix this. What about stop signs? Doesn't that negate people's right of way? And what do these white squares mean? And do these crossings even legally exist? Well, that's where this video is about to get complicated. There's something wrong with how these crossings are being done, and today we're going to get to the bottom of it. Many years ago, we had a problem. Now that cars dominate our streets, how do we give people a safe place to cross where they have the right of way? This video isn't a history lesson, but the gist is that we have mostly solved this problem with a few design solutions. In recent years, cities around the world have started to tackle a similar problem. How do we give the right of way to people cycling? How do we give the right of way to people using bike routes that are just side streets? If your bicycle crossing is coming from a side street with a stop sign, you, as the cyclist, have a stop sign, which for the non-North American viewers is basically our annoying version of the yield sign. Stop signs could contradict the bicycle crossing, how are you supposed to yield at a crossing that is also suggesting that people should yield to you? Legally speaking, this is where it gets horrible because there is no correct way to use such an intersection. This is why the flashing lights, or RFBs, are used as a band-aid. It also makes crossing on a bicycle way less convenient than it needs to be. 
Often, the button is an inconvenient spot to press, and our streets need to be designed for all users, including people on recumbent bikes, cargo bikes, and trikes, and so on. Not just able-bodied people with good balance. I have even heard from able-bodied people who have a hard time leaning over to press the buttons. Beg buttons, as urbanists call them, were invented for pedestrians, and they are not suitable for people moving at a faster pace. Problem number two. The laws are not consistent. The BC Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure does not recognize bicycle crossings. Individual municipalities have their own rules on them. Victoria's bylaw recognizes elephants' feet, which are these rectangular markings. According to the bylaw, people cycling can use a pedestrian crossing if there are elephants' feet added to it. Obviously, this also implies that they have the right of way. This works for shared crossings like this, but falls flat in every other situation, leaving us in legal limbo. Another thing worth noting, because it comes up when people discuss these crossings, bicycles do not stop at stop signs, this is normal, and this is okay. Consider the following, 12 US states have passed laws that allow bicycles to treat stop signs as a yield sign. It makes sense for cars to slow down significantly, although, if we're being honest, most of them don't stop either, because their visibility is seriously limited. Bicycles certainly don't have this problem. To require people cycling to come to full stops at every intersection, leaning over to press buttons is absurd and not very inclusive. I'm committed to designing a future where none of that is necessary. Cycling should be safer, and most importantly, comfortable and convenient. To address this, and all the problems with bicycle crossings, here are my calls to action. One. Add a Yield to Bicycles sign at problematic crossings. 2. Clarify confusion around stop signs and how they could negate the crossing. 3. Develop a provincial standard for these crossings. Some of these are municipal responsibility, some of these are provincial. I'll elaborate on them in a second, but you're probably thinking, I don't work for the province or municipality. But that doesn't mean you can't make a huge difference. Through local organizations like Capital Bike and Hub Cycling, it's easier than ever to make your voice heard. And sending an email to your city, a letter to the editor, or a comment during an engagement process is always easy and satisfying. Municipalities can use a Yield to Bicycles sign at problematic crossings to affirm their intended function, educate drivers, and give people something to point to when there's a dispute. As far as stop signs go, there are bicycle crossings where these are necessary, because the bike route uses a side street. Cars on the side street need to yield, but theoretically, bicycles don't. The best way to clarify this weird situation, in my opinion, as I'm not an expert in how we interpret the Motor Vehicle Act, could be to add an Accept Bicycles tab underneath the stop sign. This isn't about the physical act of stopping, and we'll cover that with an Idaho stop law. This is about how stop signs imply that you must yield, which, as described earlier, could contradict the bicycle crossing, creating further confusion. The province and municipalities need to explore solutions to this, and in the interest of good governance, I would strongly suggest trialing Accept Bicycles tabs right now. Like, right now. There is precedent for municipalities using signs to modify traffic laws. Lastly, the province needs to implement a defined legal standard for bicycle crossings, to be specific, make the bicycle sign the legal definition of a bicycle crossing. Most bicycle crossings already use a sign like this. It is intuitive and would forever settle the issue. Elephant's feet should not be legally used to define right of way because they are used in many different contexts to represent the fact that bicycles use this space. Elephant's feet should allow bicycles to use a pedestrian crosswalk, same as Victoria's bylaw currently does, but that's it. With that, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and thanks in advance for making our streets more safe and pleasant. Have a good day.